Hi guys, Constantin here from CGC and today we're gonna talk about optic cables and uh, optic fibers. Should you, uh, is it worth um, upgrading to it in 2023 or um, is it not worth it? That depends to you. But before that, I would like to say uh, thank you very much to everybody that has watched uh, videos on my channel and all my followers because uh, I just checked my channel and I have reached 27,000 views uh, that's March 2023 I'm quite impressed it's quite a milestone for myself so that's why I would like to thank you very much I'm gonna do my best to produce quality uh, content uh, in the future um, I love doing that uh, I don't want to monetize it I just love uh, talking about hardware uh, PCs, gaming, networking, you name it. I just, I know a little bit about everything. So, um, the reason why we're talking today about optic fiber is because I've upgraded my, um, home network to 10 gig and, uh, some of it will run on optic fiber, a very small portion of it, but it will run on optic fiber. So I decided let's do a video because, um, there's a lot of people that, um, um, are probably considering it or there's people that didn't know about it and I might find out about it in this video or many other ways anyways the reason why um, you should consider going to optic fiber is uh, mostly the differences between optic fiber and Ethernet copper cables so um, I made a small mistake Ethernet runs on optic fiber and copper cables as well we're talking about the medium here so it's optic uh, cable and a uh, copper cable so the main differences are um, in the industry at the moment between these two type of cables are first of all length so uh, while um, copper cable Ethernet network on copper cable it runs best up to 100 meters uh, well a network on fiber cable extends to 10 kilometers and beyond it just goes and goes and goes and it goes it can go even further for specialized units so that's why optic fiber is used in telecommunications a lot because they have to span long distance they can span longer distances without the need to reamplify the signal now ethernet uh, copper copper cable networks uh, if you want to go beyond 100 meters you have to you you have to reamplify the cable the, the signal on the cable that's done with various devices we're not going to go into that but because you have to do that it's not very cost effective and it's not very good so that's one of the reason also the second best uh, reason for which optic fiber is a lot better than copper is um because it's not um it does not uh, uh electric signals and electromagnetic fields doesn't interfere uh, with with the signal on fiber optics because it's light traveling down there so it's less suscept susceptible to EMS to electric magnetic fields uh, now that might not be important from home users of course it's not because we don't have like strong EM fields around the house we have some of them like phones uh, they have a little bit of and uh, uh, they have a little bit of radiation and EM fields and stuff like that um, even the electric wires that run into your house they have their own EM field so there are some but they're very small um, right so um, these are the two main reasons why optic fiber uh, has advantages over copper cable now for you as a home user if you're thinking uh, of um, upgrading your network I would strongly consider 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 uh, having a look at optic fiber as well now um, in terms of bandwidth you can find it for as low as one gigabit per second and um, higher uh, as high as I think commercially you can buy even 25 gig 40 gig up to 100 gig networks <laughs> network interface card for that but you, as a home user you can probably do at this moment in time a sweet spot is becoming 10 gig which I've gone to myself so if you wanna if you wanna um, uh, go to 10 gig uh, seriously consider optic fiber it, it is a bit more expensive I'm gonna go into that uh, next but um, it, it is worth it f because of various reasons now uh, the main reason for you as a homeowner as a simple guy 
prosumer, let's say, because um, let's face it, prosumers will be more interested in up upgrading to 10 gig networks and fiber optic networks. Uh, the reason why we, you would consider fiber optics over copper cables in a home would be A, its size. So I'm going to show it to you guys. So <laughs> this is a fiber, fiber optic cable. You can see how thin it is. It's, it's thin, thinner than a standard copper uh, cable. And this is a copper cable. It's quite a thin one as well. They, they are thicker, but there's a massive difference between them. Now that cable, the optic fiber cable can go in places where this one can't. It's a lot easier to just pull it for places than this one as well. It's a, lot, a bit more maneuverable rather than this one. So this would be one reason. The second reason was, would be, um, again, um, it's it's for output it's it works really really well with uh high bandwidth so for 10 gig for fiber is not much 10 gig for fiber is um not overwhelming in um as i can say fiber can do a lot more it can do up to 100 gig at the moment commercially you can find network cards that do 100 gig gigabits yeah so uh in terms of copper cable really struggles with uh high bandwidth and high speed so a 10 gigabit cable would be a bit more expensive and 10 gigabit networks would be uh expensive as well but it's not guaranteed because the output the signal is very very sensitive you might not reach 10 gig you might reach it uh as i said um it's a lot easier for fiber to go to 10 gig than ethan cable but both can achieve it if you have short distances or uh, from one room to another it doesn't really matter um what it does matter is is pricing now optic uh cables although they have the prices have gone down a lot now a lot lately uh and um it's readily available technologies out there. I mean, you just go on Amazon and you can find whatever you need. A few years ago, you couldn't do that. It was specialized stores because not everybody was into it. But now it's become more mainstream, more accessible. So the main reason uh, we, we've discussed it. So uh, the pricing is a important factor and it's a disadvantage for fiber because fiber optic cables are more expensive and fiber optic switches are expensive as well. Obviously, it is worth going for higher bandwidth that's what i'm saying but it does cost a lot of money so um this this unit right here this cable which has two transceivers and a fiber optic cable costs about 40 pounds at the moment and it's two meters uh this ethernet cable which can do the same thing costs about a really really good one is seven pounds and you can go even cheaper than that so uh seven pounds here 40 pounds here the cost is a lot more now you're gonna say yeah i don't need fiber optics um i'm gonna go copper yeah okay i would say go fiber optics copper uh is uh, fiber optics will degrade a lot uh, less in time and is more future proof than um copper cable that's what i would say uh because obviously you don't when you network your house this is very suitable for when you network your house and sh short connections so when you do like a ho home network and you have to pull wires for your house you're not going to do that every year or every month you're going to do that once and that's it and that's going to be there for uh, the entire duration of you sitting in that house so the fact that you're going to pay more over time doesn't mean as much i would say and that would be my logic behind it and the second thing would be um uh short cables um as in if you want to pull a cable from your um nas this is the example i'm giving because i'm using it from your nas to your switch uh you can use fiber it, it, it's just it, it's slightly better um just because you get a better throw output it's not uh and sometimes um you notice that nas units that have fiber optic cables which are sfp plus ports uh, if you use those SFP plus ports on the NASes, you can use the Ethernet cable as backup. So all of a sudden you got two connections there, one main and one backup as well. You can't um, aggregate them together. They have to be the same. Now, smarter NAS units, they have two fiber optic cables. Less smart ones usually have ones. You do have a switch that has one or two 10 gigabit ports. Uh, you can have 
have 10 gigabit ethernet uh, as in copper copper cable and 10 gigabit fiber again if you use those ports from the switch you have more uh, copper cable ports available as well so that that would be one thing uh, and uh, yeah that's pretty much it uh, now in terms of technology as i said this one uses electrical signals digital signals pretty much zeros and ones to send through copper cables and this one uses light and the light gets converted into couple cables through transceivers which i will describe further down the video um, technology is a lot more advanced here uh, but as i said in terms of long-term usage uh, i would definitely go with these guys and these are becoming cheaper and cheaper <laughs> right so ethernet cables they're really simple they've been there here for a lot longer than than fiber has um, you can if you want to build it yourself again it's very very simple you can buy um, you can buy these uh, what you call them adapters yeah RG45 jacks they're called you can buy these adapters in the cable now the cable itself there's about <laughs> four pairs each pair has two uh, conductor cables in them uh, you're gonna wonder why are they twisted where they're twisted for the exact same reason I previously said they're called UTP universal twisted pair and they're twisted because uh, if you do that the, the electromagnetic fields around the cables themselves they cancel each out they cancel each out for the two pair so these pairs the cable on the uh, let's say brown one gets the EM field on the brown one gets cancelled by the EM field on the white one and thus there is less interference because this is the main problem with uh, electrical signals for copper cables it's interference and as interference and impedance of the cable uh, increases uh, the signal attenuates and that's why the distance isn't that great on this this is really really easy to do yeah there's a lot of uh, youtube tutorials out there i might just do one one day because i can do it myself i know my way around ethernet cables um pop you pull a cable out you pull this out <laughs> You put an RG45 jack on top. There's a little, little uh, clamp that you clamp it with, and boom, you're you're done. And it will cost you pennies. It won't cost you much. If you want to go on a budget, go for this. If you don't fancy having high bandwidth in your house, you just want an internet. You just want to do like a network. And you want to go copper cables. Uh, go for it. As I said, um, at this moment in time, we've got. Um, I think 2.5 gigabit internet ethernet is um, the norm now on any motherboard you buy it's only the cheaper ones that still have gigabit internet but most of the motherboards mainframe ones so ma from ma from ma uh, mainstream motherboards to higher tier they have 2.5 gigabits with higher tier having one 2.5 and one 10 gigabit uh, ethernet adapters uh, why is that you're saying because the, inc the need for connectivity is increasing you've got more and more devices you've got n uh, faster and faster networks i mean at the moment in the uk one gigabit is the norm but uh, higher speeds are coming when higher speeds will be coming you got faster internet you got uh, higher resolution so we're running at 4k at the moment 8k is coming again 8k is a massive transfer rate even though the the video is well um uh, it's compressed and stuff it's still higher bandwidth so uh, wi-fi 6 again uh higher bandwidth all over the place so yeah um, i would say even if you don't want to go fiber if you want to upgrade your network right now research 10 gigabits go for 10 gigabits network the switches are accessible a cheap switch would would be around 200 pound mark a cheap one with one or two ports um, a more expensive one is is more i would say they're combinations of two and a half so 2.5 gigabit uh, ports and 10 gigabit ports on switches so for example if you've got um if in your house you've got multiple devices in your rooms uh, and you've got different floors you can use two uh, you can use a 10 gigabit bare bone connection between your first floor and ground floor and 2.5 gigabit connection at the floor itself so that the, the devices upstairs or the devices downstairs talk to each other at 10 gigabits and the devices on the same floor talk to themselves at 2.5 gigabits um, again that's a really good ne network model um, so uh, yeah if you want to go uh, copper uh, copper cables uh, because you want to do the cheap option go ahead 
but um, if you want to future proof yourself I would say go with fiber research it it's really easy to do now these cables you can do them yourself or you can buy them pre-made obviously pre-made are a bit more expensive if you do them yourself the process is really easy I'm going to show you down the road on this video um, and um, for me it, it's I enjoy it because I've learned something new I've never done these I've done tons of uh, uh, Ethernet cables uh, copper cables literally tons but these this was my first one that I've done and it's easy as pie even I can do it <laughs> um, yeah and uh, that that's it guys um, <laughs> hope you're gonna enjoy it we're gonna do a bit of testing as well to show you the through output and uh, uh, I'm gonna let you make your own conclusions but I strongly recommend 2023 onward if you are building a network you would want to use for years uh, going ahead I would say go 10 gigabit no questions asked go 10 gigabit you are future proof uh, you can you will add as many devices as you want your connection will be fast you can upgrade the internet as much as you want it's just better it's just you know future proofing is always uh, worthy investment if you ask me as well it's 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 a bit more expensive down the road uh, for a uh, initial costs but uh, I, as i would say if you use it for 10 years it doesn't really matter anyways guys thank you very much and i'll see you in the second part of the video which is installation and we will do some testing as well cheers bye, -bye. right so let's move on to the practical side of things so to speak so we've got here um what we've got here is a um fiber cable which just has arrived i'll put the link in my description you can find it at amazon it's rated for uh, 10 gigabits speed and what we also have here which is the most important bit is the um, transceivers um, they're again they're 10 gigabit transceivers for a 10 gigabit network um, before I show them to you I'm gonna go through their specs real quick so the brand is 10 G tech I'm gonna put the link to it in the description again I bought it with my own money I'm not sponsored for it um, so brand 10 G, G tech uh, form factor SFP plus that's the form factor for fiber connections cable mode MMF which is called multi mode fiber it's the cable mode you will be using for um, regular distances single mode fiber it is the, is the second cable mode it that's rated for very very long distances like 10 kilometers and stuff like that interface LC uh, data rate 10.3 gigabits per second that's what we want to see there um, and we also have wavelength 850 uh, nanometers um, distance for this type of transceiver up to 300 meters that should be sufficient for a regular home I would say unless you have a mansion uh, something called DDM slash DOM and temp operating temperature between 0 and 70 degrees now I do have to give you a quick warning that do um, fiber optics does operate a bit warmer than ethernet cables um, but 10 gigabit ethernet cables do operate warm as well now I'm referring to the uh, network interface card the NIC that's what runs a bit hotter than normal regular uh, ethernet like 2.5G 1G that operates at regular temperatures but if you have any curiosity and you check the temperature of your uh, network card because you can do that in windows you will notice it runs a bit warm as in 60s 65 degrees 50s even if your uh, case is well ventilated that is because 10 gigabyte ethernet is faster it requires it has a higher data for output uh, and at the moment with the current technology it just probably the chip processes more data and it's just more uh, it warms up more now the transceivers will look something like this obviously you need two for each end um, I'm gonna put the as I said the link in the description the cost is about between 20 and 30 pounds for these models they are they're from Amazon um, and I'm gonna connect these transceivers to the fiber cable right the process is relatively simple I'm gonna just do it for one of them tell you what let's do it for both of them now right this is how a transceiver look, I be, looks I believe there is a video of a transceiver on my channel already let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it properly maybe I can do a bit of manual focusing myself
that's the best I can do guys in terms of focusing so what you do is you take the fiber itself let's open it up it's a short length because this fiber is going to go from a NAS unit to a uh, switch um, as you can see the fiber um, itself will be uh, the ends of the fiber will be protected by some caps you need to remove those caps before you utilize the cable as well the transceiver itself is protected by a plastic sheet that you can remove so remove the plastic sheet from the transceiver step one step two remove the plastic caps from the fiber as well and insert the fiber into the transceiver it's as simple as that you'll probably hear a click that I've just heard at this moment and that's it you have a good to go uh, one-ended fiber cable let's do the same for the second one again let's remove the transceiver this is how it's called this transceiver is the one that produces that changes the electrical signal into light signal so it's very important so you got electrical signal coming here from your device and you got light coming out of it it's quite amazing in such a very small factor all this at 10 gigabytes per second amazing isn't it right okay so remove the plastic cap remove the protective caps from the cable and insert the cable into the transceiver and that should be it until you hit a click and that's it now what's very very important guys is as you can see the two cables uh, each of them so two cables that form the larger cable guess what you've got two cables because one is for receive the other is for transmit now the way technology works is the receiving end goes to a uh, the transmitting end goes to a receiving end so you got to make sure that the one that goes from rx here which is receive let's say uh, and in a transmit at this way now luckily this my cable is already pre-configured so that as you can see it's got color codes and stuff so the yellow from the right hand side goes to the left hand side and the white from the right hand side goes to the white on the left hand side which means they are reversed which means I've got RX and TX parity that is very important if you want your data to go through correctly and also that's how you do the cable folks obviously these ends they will go into a switch at the moment I don't have one uh, with me available I've used them and it's very hard to get two but I'm gonna sh show you a short video on how to put this in the SFP plus port of the switch as well be careful when you buy the switch make sure that the SFP plus port is rated for the speed that you need and when you buy the transceiver make sure that the tr transceiver is rated for the speed that you want as well as I said 10 gigabytes here 10 gigabits on the port if it's 1 gigabit and 10 gigabits guess what it's gonna run at 1 gigabit obviously the prices are different now to if you wanna remove the cable by any means if you wanna like change the transceiver or the transceiver isn't fitted properly or you've got some issues or you simply wanna do another longer cable or anything like that in order to remove it um, there's a process as well first thing that you have to do is there's a latch here which you need to pull and that's it you just pull it up and it's done let me just put it back it's as easy as this so you gotta press on this latch here here and pull the cable out and you're done really really simple so that's it folks that's it that's a very short description on how to do this it's a very quick operation now um, obviously uh, if you don't fancy doing it yourself that's all right uh, you've got uh, pre-wired cables which are a bit more expensive obviously you can find them uh, on Amazon you can find them on any uh, networking website or anything like that any website that's, that, that's quite decent and sells switches and routers they will also have a section where they sell cables like this so again you can find them pre-wired you just have to buy them or you can wire them yourself if you fancy doing a bit of um, DUI drinking under the influence so to speak no, it's do it yourself. I was joking. Um, yeah, so you can either do it yourself, you can buy it pre made. Now, I've chosen to do it myself because I'm quite curious to see how it's done, and I figured I'll make a video about it as well. Um, as I said, it's rated for 10 gigabits a second. Uh, 
and I'm gonna test it in the video uh, later on today as well so stay tuned for the test right guys so let's do the practical test now uh, as you can see here um, the network is up and running and the current speed of the network is 10 gigabytes per second this is a Marvel um, 10 gigabit adapter it's included in the motherboard I currently have this is a connection of 10 gigabits between my computer and uh, the network and what we're gonna do is at 10 gigabits per second we're gonna copy a file from two uh, two two MVAV drives so I, I made sure there's plenty of speed on the drives themselves and they don't get saturated because if you do use SATA drives even though it's SSD they saturate at 6 gigabits per second and now SATA drives uh, are a bit faster than that so uh, the diminishing the, the factor that uh, chokes it is the 10 gigabit internet connect, internet connection so um, right um, what I'm going to show you is a copy paste file of a 50 gigabit file I think it's let me just see yeah it's it's, a, it's more than 50 gigabits so let's say between 50 and 60 gigabits of data copied across a 10 gigabits per second network so here we go I'm just gonna issue paste I've issued the copy command earlier so paste right I'm sure you can see this I've got 1.08 gigabits per second speed and I'm copying 50 gigabits in less than a minute we're just gonna sync let that one sink in I'm gonna show you um, 2.5 gigs and 1 gig copy speeds as well we're not gonna wait for those because they're gonna be a lot longer this is just 10 gigabits per second just to show you how speed the network is uh, how fast the network is um, and just to show you the speed and what you can get now obviously as I said you need NVMe drives uh, at least PCIe 3.0 3000 megabits per second in order to achieve this speed if you copy from and a half inch hard disk drives or SSD drives you're not gonna get this speed so uh, <coughs> while we finish this discussion we've just copied 50 gigabit for homeowner uh, for home network this is pretty amazing if you ask me now let's move on and do the 2.5 gigabits test okay so uh, I had to do some minor corrections so as you can see I'm now running at 2.5 gigabits per second yeah uh, and I am copying the same file and it now takes from less than a minute to four three minutes and 30 seconds a total time of four minutes so a uh, quarter of the speed it takes about four times longer so a 50 gig, gig file four minutes now it's not bad one minute versus four minutes it's not bad if you've got 50 60 gig worth of data if you've got half a terabyte obviously you got 10 minutes and one hour it depends on the size of files that you're working so two and a half gigabits is a sweet spot so to speak if you're running copper cables um, because it's very very cheap as, as well at the moment um, the prices are comparable to a gigabit network and uh, you can pretty much find uh, 2.5 gigabit switches everywhere as well uh, and the, sp the speed difference is not that bad so four minutes compared to one minute now let's move to uh, tell you what uh, I'm not gonna go a gigabit it's gonna be it's gonna be so a gigabit is gonna be about I don't know let's say 10 minutes or so but yeah it's gonna be about 10 minutes 10 11 minutes to copy it at a gigabit uh, we're just gonna we're gonna skip that test because it's, it's irrelevant at the moment so it's um, one minute for 10 gigabits uh, three and a half four minutes for two and a half gigabits and 10 minutes for a gigabit uh, speed so that is conclusion um, this is what uh, these are your options guys so depending on what you want and the amount of files you've got if you're moving a lot of small files uh, obviously the extra bandwidth does not matter but if you're storing like uh, videos that you take on holidays um, game recordings which I do if you're a content creator you've got tons of game uh, footage now games uh, they do take a lot of space so I don't know uh, for a decent 20 hour gameplay I get about a terabyte of data now moving that across the drives to edit it uh, at uh, gigabit per second 
a lot uh, that doesn't really work with me 2.5 gigabits might work but 10 gigabits as I said I've got a terabyte of data so it will only take me a couple of minutes instead of a couple of hours so for me it's worth it for you guys I don't know anyways thank you for watching this video very much and I, I hope I hope you enjoyed it uh, if you got any questions leave them below um, and uh, cheers cheers guys